All right, so I recently moved and redid my entire office, so I thought it'd be a good time to get a new desk. I joined Trend, did the latest fad, and got myself a standing desk. So in this video, I wanna go over the pros, the cons. I also wanna give my review opinion of this specific standing desk, as well as just standing desks in general. And then at the end, I'll give you some helpful tips and tricks that I've learned from having a standing desk. So let's jump into it and get right into the cons and talk about why you might not actually want to buy a standing desk. All right, so undoubtedly, the absolute biggest con, at least in my opinion, of having a standing desk is there's not a lot of room to put things. You know, I went from this desk to now this standing desk, which just has one flat surface. Now there's some accessories you can buy and whatnot, like to add a drawer, but in reality, most standing desks, it's just a flat surface. So there's really not a lot of room to store stuff. So much so that I actually bought this off of Amazon just to store stuff like stamps and letters and my printer and other accessories because I had so much room in my last desk. You can see I've also taken up these shelves with a bunch of clutter because I just have no room on the desk. All right, now another con is that it is expensive. Like a standing desk is more expensive than a desk that doesn't move up and down, which is fine because it has another feature. But my next con, which kind of plays off that point is, are you actually gonna use it as a standing desk? Because I feel like a lot of people are gonna be like, yeah, that is something I would use if I had it, but in reality, personally, I've only used it once. And I've had it for a couple months now, and I definitely want to start using it more, but just as I'm working and whatnot, I am just find myself sitting and I don't often think like, ooh, I should stand right now. Also, another guy I work with, we were kind of laughing, he's had his for a year, and he was explaining like he never uses it as a standing desk. So the point with that con is, you'll probably know yourself better than I ever could, but maybe if you are the fidgeter who just can't sit still and is always on the move and wanting to move around, maybe you actually will use a standing desk feature a lot, or maybe you have a reason like back pain or something like that that you'll use it. But I could definitely see that as a con is like, you paid more for this feature that you never end up using, and you even gave up some stuff like extra storage space. All right, so now let's talk about the pros. And obviously the biggest pro is gonna be the ability to adjust the height. And there's actually a lot of other reasons why you might wanna adjust the height other than just being able to go from sitting to standing. I know if you're an exceptionally large person, like maybe you're like seven foot tall, most desks are not made for seven foot tall people, so you're always gonna be reaching down. But now you can get a height adjustable desk and raise it up to the level that you're gonna be comfortable with. And the same is true for somebody that is shorter than the average person. All right, now another pro that you might find that you like is that it does give a cleaner appearance. Um, it's a minimalistic, which is kind of trending now. And you know, when you do clear off your desk and move things off, it is nice and clean. And you can do the wire management however you see fit, but you can actually make it really clean, which a lot of people, including myself, like that look. Now the last pro I could think of might really be unique to me, that I wanted a desk that I could move around. Let me show you here. Because I wanted to get a lot of different viewing angles that I could film for with my desk. And having something that was mobile, that was on wheels and minimalistic and everything's tied together and tight to where I can raise it, lower it, move it around, that was something that was important to me. But I feel like I wasn't gonna be able to do that with anything other than a standing desk. So that's another pro that might not apply to everybody, but the last one that I wanted to talk about. All right, so I think it's important to note that that's why I wanted to get a standing desk was so I could roll around and get multiple different camera angles really quickly like you can see here. Now I decided to go with the Uplift version two desk and there's three main reasons why I decided to go with Uplift. One is they had a ton of different options. Two is they seem to be high quality. And the third was it seemed like a good company that stand behind their product. I know they have like a 15 year warranty and that kind of stuff. So when it came to the options, I knew because I was limited on space that I wanted a big desk. And they actually offered a 80 by 30 desk size which a lot of the other desk manufacturers out there didn't go that big. Usually like 72 is the biggest. So that was a real big factor that came into my decision making. Another thing was I definitely wanted a desk that was on wheels knowing I was moving to my garage so I could just roll everything around. And they offered that option, which others did too, but I just felt like they did it well and they had really nice caster wheels, but that actually came into play too. Another thing that's kind of weird and just particular to me is I like symmetry. And because I wanted to get angles this way, or maybe when I'm standing on the other side of the desk and the camera's facing the other way, I wanted it to be symmetrical. So they actually offered this T-frame where 
normally it's like a C frame where it's kind of pushed back where these bars are. And just if I looked at it from the side view, I don't know why, but I just prefer symmetry. And another thing is I didn't want that big crossbar going through the middle, which other desks have, but from the reviews and what I read is you kind of lose a little bit of strength and stability there, but it seems like this one did the best without having that bar going across for strength and stability. Another thing to keep in mind if you're getting this one, the wheels do add, it says on the website, I think it's like five and a half inches, maybe four and a half inches. Now my last desk I actually bought used and I kept it for over 10 years. So I figured I was gonna be using this thing for a long time. So I really wanted a quality desk with a good company that stood behind it. And I actually got to test that immediately. When I got this desk, I got this uh, laminate walnut top. I think it's their cheapest one but when it arrived, it had a big crack or scratch in it. I think it was actually a crack and I think it was caused by the shipping. So I took a picture, I emailed Uplift and said, hey, this is how my desk looks. They didn't ask any questions and they immediately responded and said, hey, don't worry, we'll send you a brand new one. And they shipped it like that day or the next day. Just so you guys know, they don't have any idea I'm making this video, I'm not sponsored or they're not you know, paying me to make this in any way. I just thought, hey, every company is gonna have problems, but it's the way they solve and handle those problems that really separate the good from the great. So it was nice to see that uplift, at least with the tiny bit of interaction I've had with them, in my opinion, did a really good job on that front. I think this is durable and good quality just based on everything I've seen. So long story short, I'm really happy with this desk. I feel really comfortable recommending it to somebody out there looking for it. I will admit it's a little bit pricey, but I do think the quality is there. And I also wouldn't blame you if you went a cheaper route. Like I was saying earlier, the biggest reason I went with them was they had that 80 inch by 30 inch size, which a lot of other manufacturers just didn't offer. One of the accessories I really like is this guy right here. It's actually a magnetic um, bar that is the same color as your thing, you can see you can put cords in there. And I did my best to only have one cord coming from the wall that powers everything. And I have two power strips underneath here. But what I like about this, especially when it's down, is it just kind of helps hide the cord so you don't see it as much. So like watch when I lower it here, it moves with the desk. And I just think adds a little extra and helps hide it, especially once you get that out of view look. So you can see when it's down low, I just think it looks a lot better than having that cord dangling. Um, and it does a great job of like keeping it in place and whatnot. So this is a really nice power strip I got off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description and it's great for a standing desk, mainly because you can see it has these holes here to attach screws so you can mount it directly under the desk. You can see it's got 13 outlets as well as some USB, but what's great about these outlets is that they're spaced good, so you can put those weird, awkward power adapters in there. Like you can see, I have this huge Apple power adapter, but I put it in this spot right here and it doesn't take up or block the other outlets. And of course, I could put it there and it'd be fine as well. And it has enough grab to where if you put something upside down and this is pretty heavy, it actually grabs it so it doesn't just fall off like some other outlets that I've experimented with in the past. So while I got the camera down here, let's go ahead and just take a look at what else is going on. You can see this comes with the desk and I have a power strip in there that's powering a bunch of things. And all of this is actually with just one power cord. I had a mount for my screen that attached to the wall, not to the desk. And in my opinion, it's way better on the wall because one, it gives me the availability to move away from the wall and break off. You know, I can just throw a laptop on here and roll around, get those camera angles. But then the other thing is, it gives you so much more room on your desk. You know, I could put this off to the side or something and I have all this room versus if you had a monitor taking up about half of your desk, you're really limited on space, which is already one of those cons I talked about with the standing desk. So by putting it on the wall, you have a lot more room and space. And you can see right now, this is the standing position for me, which is perfect. And then when I wanna go down to my sitting position, which you'll notice I got my chair right here on wheels. Again, everything on wheels. I'll put a link in the description of the wheels I got for this chair, but I can just roll over here and now it's all high. So I can do one of two things, obviously bring it down, but I also have this ability to just kinda of shift it, which is nice too, cause I can kinda of lean back and do my work like this. Just have another position, especially if you do have back pain. But obviously, my normal position, I'm gonna bring this down, and you can see I've got a lot of uh, degrees of freedom. And now this is another, again, perfect position. So again, I'm 5'10", so I don't know if you were like 6'5", if your difference between where you sit 
and where you stand is gonna be different. But for me, it's like the perfect distance from you know how where my, my eyesight is when I'm sitting versus when I'm standing. That's how much this screen moves up and down. I'll put a link to a video right here that I did on screen mounts, where I went over all the different kinds of mounts, prices and all that. And if you're curious about the screen, I'll also put a link in the description to the video I did on this screen. But that's just another little tip is, I would recommend putting your monitor on the wall to give you more space on your desk and more freedom and, and even more options. All right, and then the last thing I would say is, I think you should get the wheels, even if you're on carpet or something. It's just nice to have more freedom, more options. So I would say opt for a desk with wheels or at least for a desk that you can get wheels. So if you change your mind later on, you can throw them on there, but I'm really happy it's on wheels. Even if I wasn't using it for filming and stuff, I think I would still enjoy that feature. All right, so I'll end with my opinion on standing desks in general. I got one for a certain reason. I wanted a mobile film station basically. But if it wasn't for that, I think I would have just kept my old desk. So my point is if you have a reason to get one, I think you'll be happy that you did. But if you don't really have a reason other than it's just popular right now, and maybe you'll use the feature of being able to stand every once in a while, I would ask yourself, you know, are you gonna be a little disappointed or possibly even upset if later down the road you realize I paid this extra money for a feature I don't even use and maybe even gave up some stuff like having the ability to have a lot of storage room. That's the biggest thing I would think about if I was buying a standing desk and everybody's different. You'll know yourself better than anyone, but I think a lot of people get a standing desk but never actually use it to stand. So unless you have a reason or you know for sure you'll use it and stand a lot, I would maybe think twice about getting one. I just wanted to get you as much information about a standing desk as I could to help you make a decision. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.